G'day, fellas. Are you guys ready to find your bearings? Bear with me here. Can you bear to hear another joke? No? All right, let's cut to the chase and take a closer look at mechanical bearings. It's why you're here, after all. Bearings are used to connect bodies. In principle, however, bearings are used to limit the degree of freedom of various things. I guess you're quite content that you can spin the globe on your desk around the equator, instead of doing this. And you can certainly think of some more examples in which restriction of motion is desirable, such as houses or also machines. It would be quite a nuisance to have to chase your motorcycle around the highway all the time. Luckily, we have bearings, which help us prevent all this. With bearings, we can keep objects exactly where we need them. And bearings give us a certain freedom of choice as well. We can limit the extent a body should be able to move. Some things, such as soccer goals, shouldn't move at all. Other things, such as gears, only function properly if they can move at the same time. Let's take a look at various types of bearings that can help us master such challenges. What are the differences between various types of bearings? Let's first take a look at it in two-directional space, and we can choose our favorite body. Now, what are the motion options available to this body? This plane only has two axes, which mean that the body can only move in two directions and also rotate. It can move along the x-axis, the y-axis, and it can rotate. These are the three different options. These motion options are also referred to as degrees of freedom. Now let's throw our favorite body into a narrow crevasse. It can now only move along the y-axis. It is impossible for it to move along the x-axis or to rotate. We would refer to this bearing as restricting two degrees of freedom. In our plane, we essentially have three different bearings. First, there's the floating bearing. It only absorbs one force. It is symbolized by a small triangle with a gap between itself and the surface. This bearing only restricts perpendicular movement relative to the horizontal floor surface. So, it can still move in parallel, as well as rotate. Thus, it restricts one degree of freedom. Then, there's the fixed bearing. It looks exactly like the floating bearing. However, it does not leave a gap between itself and the horizontal floor surface. A fixed bearing only allows for rotations. It cannot be moved. Seeing as how it restricts both X and Y movements, it restricts two degrees of freedom. And then, there are bearings that restrict three degrees of freedom. There are various options available to represent these bearings, but you'll most likely find something like this. This bearing is then referred to as being firmly fixed, and it behaves that way too. No more vibrating, no more rotating, no more movement. Absolutely nothing going on there. Like fixed, you know. These three types of bearings are basically the foundation for all exam questions. In real space, the bearings behave in the same fundamental way, with the exception that there are a large number of extra degrees of freedom. There are three axes, which mean that bodies can move in three directions as well as rotate around each individual axis, which makes for six degrees of freedom. As always, examples in space look a bit more complicated, but keep cool and you'll get it done real easy. When dealing with trusses later on, we'll keep coming back to these bearing reactions as well. What are the differences between various types of bearings? That wraps it up for bearings for now. We learned about the basic function of bearings. We've gotten to know the three most important types of bearing, and all the other stuff will come at a later time. Until then, get cracking, fellas.